Hi everybody and welcome to the last episode in the Solid Principles for Machine Learning Engineers series. This time we're going to look at the last letter in the SOLID acronym, which stands for Dependency Inversion Principle. So Dependency Inversion tells us that classes or our code should depend on abstractions but not on concretions. What this means in a simple manner is basically that you want uh, for your classes to depend on uh, interfaces, not on concrete objects, which and the reason why you want to do that is because you want to depend on things that are stable and then don't necessarily change at any time, really. And that's usually the case when you have a concretion. So we're going to see what all of this means practically through a usual a Python code example. But for now, let's ask ourselves how we can spot DIP violations. So we should ask a couple of questions here. So. Uh, does a class depend on concrete objects? And if that's the case, well, we may be violating the um, dependency inversion principle. And the second question we should ask is, are you instantiating a concrete object directly in the constructor? And if that's the case, well then, once again, uh, you're probably violating DIP. But now let's just get into our Python example where all these things are going to become a little bit clearer. The Python example for today is quite straightforward. We have a class called ML uh, Pipeline. Of course, this is a sort of like machine learning pipeline or a very simple version of it, to be honest. And inside the constructor, we have an evaluator uh, object which uh, gets assigned the TensorFlow evaluator um, uh, object, which is instantiated in here. And then we do, a, we do have an evaluate um, method, which basically uses the evaluator to do evaluation on some like a machine learning, uh, like a data that we have. Okay, uh, of course, this TensorFlow evaluator is an object by itself, it's a class, and it's up here, and it has this uh, evaluate method that then it's called within the evaluate uh, method in the ML pipeline class. And here, the evaluate, of course, like it's super <laughs> straightforward, and we just like print out this message evaluating with TensorFlow. And here we have like the, the script running. So we do have like ML pipeline, an ML pipeline that we instantiate, and then we do ML pipeline dot evaluate. If we run this, we are gonna get as result evaluating with TensorFlow. Of course, like we are just like printing the, the message that we saw earlier. Now, let's see if we have um, uh, problems with the dependency inversion principle here. Well, let's see whether like ML pipeline uh, depends on a concrete object. And well, it does because it depends on a specific type of evaluator, which is a TensorFlow uh, evaluator, right? And uh, beyond that, we are also instantiating the TensorFlow evaluator here this concrete object within the constructor. So these are all red flags that we are somewhat uh, violating the dependency inversion uh, principle. So now let's go back to uh, some slides and see the design of what we have in mind and see why we may have issues with this uh, design. Here you have a simple representation of the uh, relationship between ML pipeline and TensorFlow evaluator. So ML pipeline, of course, has this evaluate uh, method, and then it has this arrows with um, a sort of like a field arrow here, arrow head, and then it, we have TensorFlow evaluator down here. This means that ML pipeline owns a TensorFlow evaluator. Okay. Now, what's the problem? So in this case, we are assuming that we are doing evaluation using TensorFlow but we may actually want to be independent of the type of deep learning uh, library that we are using for running evaluation. So it may well be that at some point we may want to have PyTorch evaluator. And, and here we actually have a problem because, well, uh, all of a sudden we would have like to swap from TensorFlow evaluator to PyTorch evaluator and have ML pipeline depend on uh, concrete evaluators. So this one 
is basically like related to TensorFlow, whereas this one is related to PyTorch. But we want to abstract from that. So we want to protect ML pipeline from all of these concretions. So how can we achieve that? Well, what we can do is basically create an interface called evaluator and have ML pipeline depending on this interface, right? That's going to be the same for all the concrete evaluators that we can think of. And indeed, here we are basically inverting the uh, dependency because all of a sudden we have TensorFlow evaluator and PyTorch evaluator that uh, depend uh, on evaluator on this interface. And as you can see, indeed, both TensorFlow Evaluator and PyTorch Evaluator are uh, concrete uh, types, evaluator types, or are concretions of the evaluator interface. And this we can see by this arrow here with uh, an empty hat, right? That means that we, like these two guys, these two su subclasses are actually subclasses and they do Im implement this uh, interface or abstract class up here. So in this case, uh, what happens is that ML pipeline is no longer depending directly on concretions, but rather on an interface. And then here we can use uh, a sort of like plugin um, uh, methodology here, because now we may be interested in TensorFlow Evaluator, but tomorrow it may well be that we are interested in having evaluation with PyTorch or Scikit-Learn, and we can just add those concretions down here, but they all respect the very same interface or evaluator in this case. Now, what's the benefit of all of that? Well, if we do respect the dependent inversion principle, well, we are protecting our code, our classes, by making them independent of elements that are fragile or unstable, so the different concretions, right? Because now we do depend on interfaces. Furthermore, the components are loosely coupled. In other words, we are indirectly respecting the open-close principle because our code is going to be open to extension because we can always add a new plugin, a new evaluator with a certain deep learning or machine learning library, but we are close to modification because we don't need to change the, in our case, uh, the ML pipeline class because we are using an interface that's always respected or that should always be respected by all the concrete evaluators. And testing becomes also quite easy because we can just instantiate the, instantiate the different components and pass them to ML pipeline and basically mock all of those objects quite easily. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can refactor our code and solve all of our issues. The first thing we want to do is to create a, an abstract class called evaluator, but for that we need to import from ABC, we're gonna import ABC as well as abstract method. Okay, so now we are gonna create an evaluator class, and this is gonna be an abstract class, and it's going to have one abstract method called evaluate. Okay, and here we'll just pass because, of course, this is a abstract method. Okay, so this is our evaluator interface. Now, we already have one concretion of it. It's this TensorFlow evaluator, which is an implementation of evaluator, and so we need to let TensorFlow evaluator inherit from evaluator, and so we'll pass evaluator here and then we would need to do like the same thing for PyTorch. So instead of TensorFlow here we'll say PyTorch uh, evaluator which is another um, implementation of evaluator but here we'll just change the evaluate, evaluate method and we'll say evaluating with PyTorch. Great, so now we do have our evaluator framework with the interface and then two concretions. And if we want to add more, 
uh, implementations of this evaluator interface, we can easily do that extending like the, the functionalities, but um, in a very simple manner, just by adding new uh, plugins, or in other words, new uh, implementations of the evaluator class. Okay, so now with ML pipeline, we do have a couple of issues. Well, the first issue, uh, as we said earlier, is that we do have an implementation of TensorFlow, well, we do have an instantiation of these concrete objects here within the uh, constructor, now, what we want to do is using dependency injection, which basically will tell us just to pass the, um, uh, to, to pass basically like this evaluator here as, a, uh, as an argument to the constructor. And so here we'll call this evaluator, and this is gonna be of type evaluator, and then we'll pass it like this, okay. So there's a lot to dependency injection, way more than what I just like showed here. This is like a relatively like complex uh, concept. I'm not gonna cover it, but I may actually be covering it like in uh, with all of its nuances like in a, in a future video. Okay, but now we can pass a, an evaluator here in the constructor and that will be assigned to uh, evaluator here and uh, the rest is just gonna remain the same, right? And the cool thing is that now ML pipeline can take any type of evaluator and then using it without knowing the specifics of which type of concrete evaluator we are using. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is to change this script here. So in this case, we're gonna first of all instantiate an evaluator, so I'll say PyTorch evaluator, for example, and this is gonna be equal to PyTorch evaluator, and then we're gonna inject it in the ML pipeline constructor, so we're gonna pass it like this, and then the rest is gonna remain the same. So let's run uh, this script and see what happens, and here we go, quite easily we get our evaluating with a uh, PyTorch. Now, ML pipeline doesn't depend directly on the concretion, but rather on an interface, which is this evaluator interface, so that we are defending it, protecting it from any changes that we may have uh, to like concrete implementations, because they all have to respect the evaluator interface. So yeah, that's it. So we refactor our code and now we are uh, respecting the dependency inversion principle. With this, we are done with the solid principles. This has been a very nice journey. Throughout like the videos, you've learned about the single responsibility principle, the open close principle, list of substitution, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. By now, you should have a good understanding of all of these different uh, concepts or principles and how to refactor your code in order to satisfy all of them. If you do actually implement a solid in your uh, coding practice, you will see that all of your code is gonna get like way cleaner, more maintainable and more flexible. I hope you enjoyed the video. If, or the whole series. If that's the case, please do leave a like and remember to subscribe to the Sound of AI channel. One last thing, we do also have a community that's called the Sound of AI community where you can find a lot of people, almost 4,000 people as of today, uh, who are interested in all things AI, audio, music, and audio processing. So if you are interested uh, in learning more and actually just like get feedback from other cool people just do sign up to the slack community i'll leave you the uh the link to sign up in the description box below that's all for today i'll see you next time take care